Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is what is an accumulator, uh, where is it installed, and why is it needed. So an accumulator is installed on typically on heat pumps, and then also on air conditioner condensers that have an extraordinarily long line set run. All right, I'm going to describe the reasons why. First, I just want you to see why this is used in heating mode. Okay, so this is a outdoor heat pump. Okay, so we're going to look at it in heating mode. And so what you first have to look at is that you have high pressure, high temperature liquid refrigerant coming into the outdoor heat pump. And then on this one, there's a metering device right outside, right outside of this liquid line on the, on the uh, outside of the unit. It's going to be a piston right there on this one. So then you have low pressure, low temperature liquid coming in. It's mainly 80% liquid, 20% flash gas, and it comes over to here to the distributor tubes. So you can have that metering device, which is inactive in cooling mode, which is now active in heating mode. It then comes through these distributor tubes. It comes into this coil right here, and it is low pressure, low temperature liquid refrigerant, and it then ends up absorbing heat from the outside air. The middle of this coil is going to be in the saturated state where liquid and vapor both exist. It's going to actually start that ray as it comes in because it's going to be 20% flash gas as it comes into this coil. But as it absorbs heat, it's then going to turn to a superheated vapor, and then it's going to come back out of the coil here as a superheated vapor through this line right here. So then it comes through this line up into the reversing valve. The, there's three tubes on the bottom of this reversing valve. The middle one is always true suction. Okay? And the top one out of the reversing valve is always uh, pure discharge. So in heating mode, you're going to have this, this line right here and this line, which is true suction connected in heating mode. This is a uh, Bryant unit. So that means that this reversing valve is actually powered with 24 volts on the coil, which you actually can't see, but it's, it's right down here. And it comes out as a vapor, right? If you have a superheated vapor in the coil and it comes out of the coil through the reversing valve and then it comes down inside this tube right here, right here, and then it comes up right through this tube and it comes into the accumulator as a vapor. Then it comes through the accumulator and then goes directly into the compressor as a low pressure, low temperature vapor. It then comes out as a high pressure, high temperature vapor discharge gas, and it's the hottest point in the entire system as it comes out. Okay, just so you know, there's this one little other tube right here, and that is always true suction, and that is connected over here, and right on the other side of this is just a, a valve core. Okay, so, so it's a service valve, basically, with a valve core in it, and that will give you pure suction regardless of whether you're in heating or in cooling mode because it's just hooked into it right as it comes into the compressor. Okay, so now that we explained that, let's back up a step. So what if you don't have a superheated vapor coming out of this coil and coming to the compressor? In an ideal world, yeah, you would have a superheated vapor coming out of this coil into this line through the reversing valve and into this accumulator. But the accumulator's job is to stop any liquid from getting to the compressor. So it, it makes sure that you only have pure vapor going to the compressor. So why would that possibly happen in heating mode? So the, the issue here is that what if this coil is, has frost on it? We know that this heat pump is running during the winter time. And what happens is this coil has to be lower than the temperature of the outside air. So if the outside air is 40 degrees or below, then this coil right here has to be below freezing, below 32 degrees. And if there's any, hu any humidity outside, then this coil is going to end up getting frosted and then possibly then frozen over, okay? And it's not going to have a great ability to absorb heat from the outside air. Also, the outside air is cold, right? So it also does not have a great means of absorbing heat from the outside air since it's very, very cold outside and that the coil is frozen. So in that case, you don't have any superheated uh, state coming out of here. You don't have a superheated vapor coming out of here. So then coming into this accumulator is still saturated state refrigerant. So liquid and vapor are both coming into this accumulator, but this accumulator is only allowing 
uh, vapor to come into the compressor. So how it works is this tube right here just drops whatever liquid and vapor right into the tank. Okay, this tube it goes down to the bottom. It has a small metering device at the bottom, and then it comes back up over here. So this is open and it's sucking vapor from the top of the cylinder. So you can imagine the cylinder almost as a refrigerant tank, where you have liquid in the bottom and vapor at the top. Well, if this is op if this tube is open at the top, it's just going to pull vapor. All right, this tube is not connected to this tube. This tube just comes down and used and comes back up, and it's open. It's going to suck vapor, and then at the bottom, the little metering device is going to end up pulling a little bit of liquid and oil from the bottom of this container. Uh, it's going to put it through the metering device, and it's going to suck it up a little at a time, allowing it to phase change into a vapor before it gets to the compressor. The main reason for that is just to make sure that you get the oil out of the bottom of this container. You don't want this container having oil in it and then the compressor not having any oil. So that's why you have that little metering device at the bottom. Liquid and oil are, are together. So it has to pull them both at the same time through the small metering device in the accumulator. And then it's going to go feed the vapor compressor as a vapor refrigerant. And, and that's why this is located here in, in heat mode. So that's one reason why this accumulator is here. It's, it's just to store some of the liquid refrigerant. This is not a receiver, and it's in a completely separate spot. So this accumulator is, is not interchangeable with a receiver. A receiver stores subcooled liquid, and the receiver is, is between the condenser coil and the TXV. The accumulator is actually between the condenser coil and the compressor. So really, if you wanted to get it closer even, it's between the, the reversing valve and the compressor at a heat pump. A receiver, that would end up being between the condenser coil, and if you wanted to get a little closer, it would be the service valve. So remember that this coil in heating mode is now the evaporator. In cooling mode, this coil right here, the outdoor coil, is called the condenser coil. In cooling mode, this accumulator is basically drained of liquid refrigerant. It's just in heating mode due to the varying load. Uh, that's when you're going to end up having liquid in this accumulator. As well, you have the outdoor coil, which is then the evaporator coil. Uh, with the refrigerant inside that may not be able to attain the correct amount of superheat. That's when you have the saturated refrigerant coming in here and the accumulator is, is there to help separate the liquid and the vapor so that you just have vapor going to the compressor. Now let's just picture an air conditioning system. If you just had this compressor, say it's typically in the middle in here, uh, if it's just a condenser only, meaning for AC only, and you didn't have the reversing valve, you might need to add an accumulator if you have an extremely long line set run going to your evaporator coil. And what happens is the suction line coming from the evaporator to the compressor in an air conditioning system only may end up rejecting heat on the way to the compressor. If it rejects enough heat, it's going to lose all of its superheat, and, and therefore the compressor is going to end up having a saturated state refrigerant, which is liquid and vapor, um, inside the compressor, and that would not be good. By the way, this compressor right here is a circle on the top. It's long and skinny. It comes up. This is called a scroll compressor. That's how you tell the difference. A reciprocating compressor will be more oval, and it will be lower down. Okay, It will probably be about this height right here, uh, but that will be an oval. This is a circle if you look straight down at it. A scroll compressor also, just so you, so you know, they tend to make a little bit more noise than a reciprocating one, especially when they shut off. So I do warn the customer about that. It may sound a little different than the older air conditioner, but everything is fine. They're so used to that uh, reciprocating compressor hum that when you install a scroll compressor, you need to educate the customer a little bit just so they don't think anything is wrong. Uh, but the uh, loud shut off with the scroll compressors, that is, that is pretty normal. Also, I wanted you to know that this accumulator is a much thinner metal than the compressor. And also the filter dryer is typically a little thinner metal. This metal right here is pretty thin. So if you see it rotting right here, rusting, or on the bottom right here, you want to go ahead and sand that off and then and maybe uh, put some primer on it. Uh, you want to put some uh, Plasti Dip on this. Uh, I have that linked in the uh, description below. Uh, or wheel well paint, something like that, something to stop the rust uh, basically from eating way through this. This will end up being a refrigerant leak on your heat pump or also the filter dryer as well.
Okay, so I just wanted you to know why the suction line accumulator was there and where it was located at. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.